This is Kanji in Danzanru Jiu-Jitsu. I'm your host, George Arrington. In this fifth part of our series on Okunote, we'll be looking at techniques 15 through 19. The material used in this video comes from the makimono or scroll that Professor Henry Seishiro Okazaki gave to his students after they reached the rank of second black belt. Uh, the contents of the scroll are known as the Mokuroku or catalog of the Danzanru system. This is the section of the Okunote within this makimono. In this video, we're going to look at these five techniques. So the first technique we'll look at, number 15, is called Gyakute Garami. Uh, this is the, the image from the scroll. If we were to look at the printed characters, they would look like this. The first character says Gyaku, and we've seen this in previous videos. It means reverse or inverted. Te simply means hand, but together these two can mean reverse hand or underhand, uh, and it can also mean a surprise plot twist. And then the last character is Garami, which means to tie something up. So the brush strokes of this of these kanji look like this. First let me turn on my laser pointer and then we'll look at the techniques. So here's gyaku. It goes one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then the, the radical for this this kanji goes uh, is the last part of how we write the kanji. Uh, seven, eight is this little uh, shape that I've called a three shape in the, in the past. And then the ninth stroke goes down like this. Te starts up here, goes one. Now that's going from right to left, but the next two go from left to right. Two, three. Notice that two and three are straight across, whereas one is slightly angled downward. And then the fourth stroke is an arcing downward stroke like this with a little kick on the end of it. And then the third kanji in this in this uh, technique name is a relatively complicated kanji. It goes one, two, and then three. That's the radical for hand. And then this repeated shape, four, five, six, start, six starts here and goes all the way down with a little kick like that. And then seven and eight are downward strokes. And then we repeat that, that uh, same shape, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's a relatively complicated character. So technique number 16 is Kote Garami. There's the image from the scroll. And there's what the printed characters would look like. And really the only different character in this is the first one, which is Ko, which means small. Te, of course, means hand. And as we saw in the last technique, Garami means to tie something up. Now, small hand together can mean forearm or wrist. So that's what those two characters together would mean. The brush strokes for Kote Garami look like this. There's Ko. I think we've seen this one before in a previous video. It starts here goes straight down with a little kick. Actually, there's a little angled portion right right there. So it's little angle and straight down and then an upward kick. 
and then 2 and 3. That means small. Hand we saw in the last, in the last uh, technique. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then garami looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have garami. So the next technique, number 17, is called koguruma. And there's the image from the scroll. The printed kanji would look like that. And you'll notice that the ko character is the same as the ko character in kote garami that we saw in the last technique. But now we have this new, uh, this new kanji, uh, kuruma, or guruma. So once again, ko means small. But kuruma, or guruma, as it's used here in a combination, can mean wheel or automobile. So in, in this case, it's meaning a wheel, a small wheel. Uh, but kuruma more, more frequently is used to talk about an automobile. So if you're um, saying something in Japanese and talking about your car, then you would say, uh, you say kuruma. Now the brush strokes look like this. Again, ko, we saw this in the last, uh, last uh, technique name, starts here, one, with a little kick, two, three. But now we have a new, tech, a new kanji that we haven't seen before, and that is kuruma, or guruma. And it goes one, two, then we draw this box, three, four, five and we don't draw the vertical line quite yet we come down here we go six and then we draw the vertical line through the whole thing like that that's kind of an interesting an interesting um, uh, kanji so technique number 18 is called toranage there's the image that we see in the scroll and there are the printed characters. And nage we've seen many times before. Nage means to throw. But we'll now look at what this tora means. So there are the, the hiragana for this. Tora. And what that means is tiger. A tiger. And again, nage means throw. So what, is this, uh, what does this tiger kanji look like? Well, the brush strokes look like this. So when you write out Torah, you come up to the top and you go a little stroke down like that and then a, a perpendicular stroke right there, so number two. So again, it goes one, two. Then you write this, this uh, sweeping stroke, uh, sweeping downward stroke, three, and then four comes across with a little arrow shape or a little kick there on the end. So that's the first part. Then the second part of this kanji is to write the number seven. If so, if you know how to write the number seven in kanji, it goes like this, five, six. So that, that character right there is the character for the number seven. And then the seventh stroke of this kanji comes down like so. And then eight comes down and up like that. Then nage, we've seen before, one, two, three. That, that's the character, the radical for hand. And then four, five, six, and then seven. So the last technique we'll look at in, in this video is number 19, 
Tora Katsugi. So in the previous technique, we saw this word Tora, and we, uh, we think, well, gee, that must mean tiger, and indeed it does. So here's the image from the scroll. Here's the printed characters. There's that Tora that we saw in the previous, uh, previous technique. And now there's another character, Katsugi, which looks fairly complicated. So we'll take a look at that. So again, once again, Tora means tiger. And now this Katsugi means carrying or to carry or to, to, uh, to uh, bear on, on, uh, on, your, on your shoulders. Um, it can also mean a shouldering, carrying on your shoulders. Now, if you look at this character, you'll notice that it has quite a few strokes in it. In the, uh, in the late 1940s, a lot of the characters were simplified and made uh, easier to write. The Katsugi, in this case, was one of those characters, and it looks like this now. So this is this character, and the, the character that's shown on the scroll are indeed the same character, only one is simplified. So let's take a look at the brush strokes for both of these. Again, we, we saw the, the, the brush strokes for Tora, but we'll look at that again. So one, two, three, four, and then we write the character for seven, five, six, and then we write these two strokes here, seven and eight. And so that means tiger. So now let's look at the, the brush strokes for Katsugi. Wow, what a, what a number of strokes there, it's 16 strokes. So one, two, three, again, that means hand, that's the radical for hand. And then we do the rest of the right side of this, of this kanji. Four, five, six comes down like this, seven comes across, eight comes like this, nine comes like this, and then the remainder of this kanji is the character for word, um, pronounced kotoba in, if it was by itself. But this, this character, the remainder of this character means word. But uh, let's see how we draw that. So there's a little tick mark here. That's uh, stroke 10. Then 11, 12, 13 are parallel lines where the where the uh, top of those is a little bit longer than the previous ones. And then we draw the character for mouth, which is 14, 15, and then 16. So that is the, uh, that is the character Katsugi in its original form. Now, if we wanted to draw the, the simplified version of Katsugi, it would be like this, one, two, three, but now we draw the, uh, the sun coming up over the horizon. That's what this, this picture is here. So it goes four, five, six, seven. That, that character is the character for sun. And then we put eight like that, which yeah, is a picture of um, the sun coming up over the horizon. Uh, now, why, why, these, why these mean uh, one thing and this one means another? Uh, and how they simplified that is beyond the scope of this discussion. But that's the simplified version of Katsugi. Uh, which one do you write? Well, uh, really you could write either one. This, this one is the one that's in the scroll, and this one you'll uh, sometimes see written in, uh, in uh, Danzanru textbooks. One good source of information about Danzanru, especially the characters that were used by Professor Okazaki is my book Mokoroku and Kaiden Show, the official documents of Danzanru Jujitsu. It's available on Amazon and it contains a translation of several scrolls as well as other uh, Japanese documents from Professor Okazaki. 
Another good book is Don Zunru Essentials. This has an overview of the Don Zunru Jiu Jitsu homepage, but it has a whole lot more in there as well. So I hope you'll pick that one up. Well, thanks for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope you'll keep an eye out for the next video in this series. Thanks again.